show you the testing quick start with Quobox 6. As you can see, I have a pre-generated application here on my left, the advanced script one. The tests harness is located right here under a folder called tests. You can see test box is already installed and this is because it's already defined in the box.json under the dev dependencies. Okay, it's right here. Okay, so you don't have to install it again. The test harness is configured or composed of several folders and files in order for you to leverage testing. One is the resources. The resources is just a folder for you to actually create other types of helpers per se for your testing harness. You can put them there. Your specs folder is basically where you're going to be developing these test bundles to test against whether it's integration or unit or module unit or module integration. This is where you're going to be defining all your, those test bundles and actually uh, creating your tests. Application.cfc is uh, a very unique approach to testing, especially in ColdFusion where every application.cfc is its own memory space. So the actual testing harness, it's its own memory space. It is completely different than the application.cfc in the root, which powers your web application. So please note that there is a difference between this application.cfc and this application.cfc. They have different names, though that means that they have different memory spaces, okay? This one also has a mapping for tests and a mapping for the root application. So all your tests are going to run in isolation of the main application. And this is good. Okay. We're simulating or creating a virtual application for you to work with. And at the end of the request, usually we do some cleanup. Basically we're, if we have the controller in memory, which is the call box main overseer, then we're going to shut it down and completely remove it from application scope. So every time that we are executing requests against the test harness, we are getting a virtually new application for you. So this can give you repeatable code and you can discover bugs a lot easier. Okay, so that's the importance of the application CFC. One last tip, everything that you do in the main application, okay, whether you're defining data sources, Java settings, etc., they must be replicated here if you want them to work in the virtual application. If not, they will fail, okay? You have an index, which is our test box little browser that I can show you. So you can see the application running right here. Uh, I can go to the tests index, and this is the little test browser. So I can actually browse my tests and actually execute them right from there. So it's a very useful little utility. Okay, that's the test index. You can configure it and spice it up as you see fit. We also have the runner, which is basically the execution of all the tests via the browser so you can see here this is the runner okay it actually tells me a, a simple statistics of the execution of the tests which engine you're on which version of test box how many bundles how many suites how many specs this is one spec that got executed you can see all the different uh, specifications that got fired you even have a debug stream so you can actually see debugging data come in through the console right here uh, you have all little nice little things like collapse uh, filtering um, and when you have more bundles you can actually expand them and collapse them you can also click on specific areas so you can actually execute only those specific tests so you have a little bit of interactivity here in the test runner okay then you have a test.xml which is your ant runner if you're using any type of continuous integration using Jenkins or GitLab or Bitbucket or anything else, you can use uh, ant in order to develop ant JUnit reports. That's all kind of located here, okay? Uh, this is your main spec, as you can see here, uh, which is pre-generated uh, according to this main handler. So this, we just wanted to give you a little bit of code coverage to start and for you to actually know how to actually work with the testing harness. The other thing uh, that is really nice is that I can actually start a console. So let me start a new console right here uh, in this folder. And I can create a shell using command box. And instead of you having the browser here and basically just reloading the browser, even though there are tools that can monitor your files and basically do reloading, uh, we like the command box. So in command box, we have the test box uh, namespace and you have the test box run command by default it actually talks to the pre-configured um, application and you can see that it executes those tests for me if you want the actual location to be shared across all the system well you can store that in your box.json very easily 
okay to do that I can take the location of my runner okay and just do a package set taskbox dot runner and that will basically save the runner inside of my box.json okay so right now we definitely need to store that port in the server.json in order for everybody that's sharing the source code will have the same approach to testing okay by doing that it, it basically just uh, does the same right but it's now defined in that box of json so it can be stored for further usage now the other cool thing about the console is that i can use a test box watch command and the watch command is great because then i can go and actually work on my application and let's say that instead on my handler saying welcome to callbox i wanted to change it to welcome to my application if I just do this and click save, you'll see that immediately I get a response saying that my failure because of my expectations have changed. Okay. So since I changed an expectation, then I must go into the test, which in this case, it says it can render the home page, which as you can see, does a get operation. This is new in Callbox. Well, I think it was 5.4 that it was introduced, uh, thanks to Eric Peterson, but we have a lot of these HTTP methods like get post put patch options head etc and we can use them to actually execute routes in this case we can use an event or you can use a route you can use parameters you can use all kinds of goodies even if you hover over it in vs code it actually tells you what you can actually pass you can see here you can pass the route you can pass parameters just like an rc scope uh, you can pass headers and by default we're going to always render the results and you can even disable exception handling if you're going to be doing some funky things in your testing but by default, it's really easy. I'm just saying, hey, go execute main.index, give me a request context of that evaluation, and then I can do my expectations. I say here, okay, I'm gonna expect the private welcome message to be welcome to callbox. I changed it, so it's gonna be welcome to my application. And now it goes green, just like that, very fast. You, you, you saw that, it was almost instant, about 200 milliseconds and it created a virtual call box application with everything just like the browser and we simulated the entire operation okay so very very easily we can work with this you can also very very easily see mistakes okay so if for whatever reason let's say that we make this set funky view okay and i save it you'll see that it gives me the exception stack trace right here and in vs code is great to have this integration because if i click out I can actually see right here and I can follow through to the exact location where the exception occurred. This is fantastic. Now I can come here and actually fix my exception and now I'm back to green. So the approach to integration testing or even unit testing that we have none here right now, but the purpose of this is a testing quick start. I very easily can create and manipulate more tests very easily because of the prefabricated approach that we have created for you it is extremely fast and extremely easy to follow uh, we have created this pre-generation for you so uh, to, to end this short introduction video I'm just gonna create another default action and test it okay so we have a, a data action let's just create another action the traditional one called echo okay uh, I'm gonna use my shortcuts here in VS code so I'm just gonna call this echo and I'm just gonna return uh, my data so I'm just gonna turn hello Luis All right so I've created this echo but I have not created a specific test for it but I can go here now and said it can render the home page now I can say it can do an echo okay and in this case I will do a same approach and this will be done through a get operation you don't have to use the this um, that was before in Adobe there was a, a bug using Adobe engines I believe it is fixed but if not remember to use the get and in this case, I'm going to say main echo, and I'm going to use a pattern of not an event, but a route. Okay. Now, if I do this, then I can do my expectations. Uh, you can see here that it returns. So how in the world am I going to get the, this back? Well, there's a few things. So before we're going to use a debug and we're going to say event.get rendered content. Okay. And we're going to debug it. So we're going to debug it, but now I'm going to go to the browser so you can see that. Uh, because the browser is the one that debugs it and you can see there there is hello Luis okay in this debugger the console does not show the debugging just yet maybe in the future all right so I know that that method gives me what's going to be rendered to the screen so I can just expect for this to include let's say the keyword hello Luis so if I do this then it fires and there we go I can do an echo 
great it works so now what do we do if we are expecting a parameter okay so we can do an echo with no past name and let's do another expectation where we can say it can do an echo with a past uh, name right so we're going to do the same we're going to do event equals so i'm going to do a get operation i'm going to say main echo but then i want to pass a parameter so i can open here a struct and pass in the parameters i want so i'm going to say name uh joe all right so now i'm going to be executing the same event but instead of using the default of luis i'm going to use joe so i should expect to get a hello joe now if i run this obviously it's going to fail which is great because i'm doing it in bdd style i can go back to my handler and i am going to basically change this so we can accept the rc.name right so in this case i can even just say rc.name and if nothing is passed then use the default of luis okay so just like that i can use my elvis operator and have it going and there we go now all my tests are green and i have created integration tests very easily and doing an expectation of a receiving variable okay and doing the expectation right here very easily okay so hopefully this will be a, a nice little introduction for Cobox 6 integration testing uh, we'll do several more videos for the documentation coming soon thank you so much